saw Stan and Jordan singing, I'm happy today and the sun shines bright. Yeah, man. Yeah, I like it. I'm a gooder. I am happy today and the sun shines bright. The clouds have been rolled away. For the Savior said, whosoever will, may come with him to stay. Thank you, you said whosoever will. You didn't just say one group over here or another group over there. You said everybody come. So thank you, Lord, that we got in on that. And Lord, uh, I pray you come and Lord, uh, reiterate that whosoever will may come to you and do whatever business they have to do. You told us to uh, come to you and uh, you'd give us rest. And you'd meet our needs, God. And you'd answer our prayer. So Lord, I pray you'll do that uh, for us this morning. Open our hearts of every... Uh, men, woman, boy, and girl in this place. And Lord, I pray you have your way. And Lord, when all said and done, help us to give you the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Up Calvary Mountain, wonderful Lord, walk across my Savior, weary and worn, racing for sin. Death on the cross, that he might save them from endless loss. Blessed Redeemer, precious Redeemer, sing now I see him on Calvary's tree. Redeemer, sing now I sing on Calvary. 
I, I, I would start to walk by the pews and I went, go away, go away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm busy signing it. I knew what they were doing. I, it's got little, little cakes and cupcakes and I wish, that, I wish I had that much cake. Amen. Uh, there's enough candles uh, on this picture here to burn down a forest. Of course, 63 candles on a cake wouldn't be very safe. Well, thank you all uh, for signing this and giving Thank, and thank y'all for this. It's real sweet of y'all. Amen. Uh, it, it gets to a certain point where where you, you, you kind of observe birthdays, <laughs> but you wish they wouldn't come so often. Amen. Seems like they've come far too often. Well, thank y'all. I, 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 I'm praying God will bless you for being so kind to your pastor. And I, I appreciate you loving me. And I, I love y'all. Amen. Uh, I praise God for you. All right, I guess it's preaching time. Um, let's take our Bibles and turn to Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. I'm going to preach this morning about my mom. My mom. Now, Betty Elizabeth Benton is with Jesus. She died many years ago now. And uh, I miss her. Um, she was quite a lady. Uh, sometimes, uh, we, we were like this, and, uh, most of the times we loved one another. Amen? Uh, I was her only child, a uh, male child, and, uh, she, uh, she prized me quite highly. Amen? And, I uh, uh, I'm going to preach about my mom. And uh, in verse 22 of Proverbs 23, it says this. It says, Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Heavenly Father, help us. God, age comes to everybody. And God, uh, sometimes people... Uh, I don't know, they, uh, they get uh, to be adults and all of a sudden uh, the relationship with their parents uh, is not so good. But Lord, uh, the older I get, the more I appreciate the things that my mama tried to teach me and the things she had to say. And uh, Lord, I pray that folks in this room, uh, God will feel the same way about their mother. If, if their mother's still around, help them to uh, go to them and say Happy Mother's Day and give them a hug and a kiss and Tell them how much they appreciate their mother. And God, if they're not around, Lord, uh, God, help us to remember our mom. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, somebody said the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And that's true. Um, mothers have a great influence on us, whether we like it or not. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, gives the commandment, Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Um, it's, the Bible says it's the first commandment with promise. And that's a promise. You honor your father and mother, and guess what? You'll live long on the land the Lord thy God giveth thee. Uh, some mother wrote this. Uh, this is a poem by a mother. It says, My child, I do not ask that you repay the hours of toil and pain, the sacrifice of youth and strength shall not have been in vain. I do not ask for gratitude, but only this, my child, that you shall live your life so well, my gifts be not defiled. The nights I watch beside your crib, the years of love and care, 
will amply be repaid if once I see you standing there, an upright and honest soul on whom success has smiled, that I may say with humble child, or humble pride, that is my child. I messed it up, didn't I? That's my child. Would your mother say that's, did she claim you this morning? Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at a few things here. Now, we're going to stay in the book of Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs 1, verse 8, uh, talks about an interesting thing. It says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. So the first thing we'll go like this morning is the law of your mother. You know, mothers are good about giving, laying down the law. Amen? Uh, my mother had lots of little rules that I was supposed to follow. <laughs> so I, I picked out three of them. I'd, I'd be here all morning if I, if I preached about all of them. Uh, one of the ones I heard a lot, and, and, and mostly this is for boys, although I imagine some girls probably heard this too. When you go outside, close the door. <laughs> Now, I don't know why, but kids, you know, they want to go outside. They just go outside. Door? What door? Flies? Air? You know, air get in? You know, what's, what's that? You know, and I hear, I hear uh, as I went out the door, if you're going outside, close the door. It should be on the other end of the house. You'd know I was going outside somehow. Um, <laughs> uh, and, you know, uh, you think about that. Well, your mom and dad pay the bills. Uh, you know, and, and little kids don't think about how much it costs to air condition the outside, <laughs> but it does. Uh, now, when, when I was coming up, when I, I remember when I was a little kid, I had a fan in my window when I went to bed. And then I remember the day that we got our first air conditioner. Um, my dad was a heating and air man and, uh, at Andrews Air Force Base, and some guy that he worked with did air conditioners on the side and dad i don't know how much he paid for this thing but it was the biggest old wind air conditioner you ever saw and ugly this thing was ugly it didn't have no cover on it and uh he 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 made some sheet metal and and put a cover on it, but it stuck out the side of our living room, and it did pretty good. It, it cooled most of the house. Uh, noisy? Boy, I think it was noisy. But you know what? Uh, they paid for that. They paid the bills to run that thing, and the heater in the winter. I don't ever remember being terribly hot or terribly cold in the winter time. Uh, so my mom had all the right to say, when you go outside, close the door. Of course, you know, all the insect little buggies had to stay out of the house too. Um, here's another one you may recognize. It's your dog. You take care of it. <laughs> you remember that from mom? I, I, got a, I got a dog when I was about five years old, Jackie. And they made a, a, a point of saying, this is your dog. And so... Uh, I had to learn how to feed it. I had to learn how to take it for a walk. Now, at first, my dad went with me because uh, them Labradors, they get kind of uh, chunky. And, you know, a little little four-year-old kid it dra drag you down the street, you know, uh, and go where it wanted to. So dad would, uh, you know, we'd go for a walk. But, you know, you said, well, why did mom tell you that? Well, she wanted me to learn some responsibility, you know, the greatest thing your mom and dad can teach you is how to be responsible. How to pay your bills. How to go to work. How to do a good job for your employer. How to feed your family. Because um, we don't live in the day where you have a farm, you know, and you go out and you grow your own food. You have to pay people money. And, and I don't know if you know these kids, but uh, food, you know, let's say something is $4 a pound now. When you get up and you become an adult, it's literally eight dollars a pound. I remember when I was a kid, I think hamburger was thirty-two cents a pound, and it didn't come in tubes. You, uh, they ground it at the grocery store. And, but now it's it's terrible. Some of this stuff, it just it just seems to cost. But you know, you still have to feed your family somehow or another, and it takes responsibility. 
I watched my mom do that. My mom worked most of my childhood. Now, you say people didn't, women didn't work. Well, they were starting to because things were, inflation was coming along and it became a, a big thing. And, and, and so I watched my mom be responsible and she wanted me to be responsible. So they gave me a little critter. Oh, I love that dog. Me and him got along real good. Uh, Dad built me a tree house. And uh, we didn't have no trees in the backyard. So he got four four by four poles. And uh, it was kind of like a, a tree house on stilts. And it was just like a four by four with a, uh, I think he, he bought one of these plastic pools for the roof, you know. And then he had a little ladder. And I taught that dog to climb that ladder. And we would sit up there. In that tree house. My mom, my mom would look out the door and she was looking, around. I was supposed to be in the backyard and I, I we'd hide and I, I'd pull the dog back and he'd start, he'd start barking. I'd say, shh. And she said, you got that dog in that uh, tree house. You better get down from there. Uh, my mom uh, seemed like she had eyes in the back of her head. Amen. <laughs> we'll preach about that in a minute. Ah. Uh, Here's another one she used to say. Remember to say please and thank you. Your mom ever tell you that? Oh boy. Yeah. Ah, uh, I said, why did mama do that? She was trying to teach you manners. Manners. Proverbs 31, verse 25 says, Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praiseth her. A few years ago, there was a lovely Christian mother uh, gave her uh, pastor some criticism he deserved. He had preached a strong sermon on personal evangelism, pointing out that every Christian's obligation was to reach out and win others to the Lord. In conclusion of the sermon, he tried to uh, uh, obliterate every excuse that anyone might ever have for failing to lead others to Christ. The sermon needed to be preached, of course, and still does. But apparently he had been guilty of some unfair emphasis. I guess he picked on the moms. And this mom said, oh, no, he not. <laughs> After the sermon, he was invited to the home of the lovely Christian family. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's even worse than being confronted after church. Uh, the husband was completing his resident work as a medical doctor and had little time to spare, but still he spent time in the church's personal work program. The wife beautifully cared for their lovely three children. All of them were very young. One was still an infant in arms and required a lot of time. After the meal, the wife asked the pastor if he remembered the scripture for his share who goes down in the battle, uh, so shall his share be uh, who stayeth uh, by the stuff. That's in, in uh, Samuel. About They went out to battle and some of the soldiers were too tired and stayed behind and then they come back from the battle with all the goodies and the people that went to the battle didn't want to give it to the people. And David said, no, that's not, not going to happen. And uh, he confessed his ignorance. <laughs> Uh-oh. He didn't remember the scriptures. And she gave him the context of King David insisting on the home guard being rewarded equally with those who had more obvious essential role of fighting on the front line. And then she shared a wonderful truth which is so easily forgotten. She mentioned how she felt at taking care of the children patiently, teaching them the ways of God and his great values, looking for moments of readiness to deflect them gently when they get on the wrong track uh, was staying by the stuff. She went on to point out that she had often felt guilty for not doing more for the church work uh, than she did. But she felt great the greatest ministry was being a dedicated Christian mother. Uh, yeah. If you raise good Christian kids and people that are saved in your house, you've done a ministry for God. My mother did that. 
I had the law of my mother. Proverbs chapter 4. Let's look at something else. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Let's look at the sight of thy mother. Um, my mother always looked me up and down when I went out of the house. Do you want to do that? She made sure I was presentable. Look, you leave kids to themselves and you never seen such a grubby, awful looking thing in your life. They get out there and play in the dirt or get, you know, I, I, I mean, uh, the, the little girls will go in the kitchen and experiment and, uh, you know, they may, they may get, uh, uh, you know, on mama's lipstick and have it all over their face. Uh, but some, some or another, they have to go out of the house and meet other people. So mama wanted to present a good family. She didn't want people thinking that she had a bunch of little ragamuffins in her house. So she'd make sure I was presentable. She'd make sure my shirt was tucked in. She'd make sure my hair was combed. She'd make sure my teeth was brushed. Uh, when I had glasses, she'd make sure they were on straight and all clean. And, and she, if I had, uh, you know, uh, dress shoes on, she'd make sure they were polished. Or if I had tennis shoes on, she'd make sure they weren't all full of dirt and, uh, you know, ugliness. So she made sure I was presentable. Uh, mom, moms are great. Uh, and now when I go out, I look in the mirror and say, okay, am I ready to go to the public? That came from my mom. I thank God for that. What a great blessing. Um, and like I said before, it seemed like she had eyes in the back of her head. All right, it's mom radar or something. I don't know what it is. I'd be in the backyard in the corner of it, around the corner from the back. There's no, there's no way she could have seen me from the house. Even if she looked out the window on that side of the house. But I get into some meanness. Pretty soon, I hear from the back door, Jeff, what are you doing? I'm like, what? How in the world did she know? Of course, she knew her boy. I was always into something. Uh, and, you know, uh, mama's, <laughs> your mama ever, ever thump you in the head and said, quit fidgeting. <laughs> I got a lot. I, it's amazing I don't have this big lump on the side of my head from how many times I got thumped on this kid. Um, and it always sounds kind of hollow when, <laughs> when I do that. <laughs> but it, it, it was amazing what she could see. Um. But you know what? She was the first person I went to when I got wounded somehow or another. I didn't go to dad. I went to mom. You know why? Because I knew mom. She'd have sympathy for me. She'd take me into the bathroom. She'd clean me up, you know, with a washcloth. And she'd put some Bactine or some salve or something on it. She'd put a Band-Aid on it. And she'd fix me up. And when I got done, I felt, I felt better just because Mom had fixed me up. You know, the Bible uh, has a whole book about a mother uh, and her daughter-in-law. It's called the Book of Ruth. Uh, Ruth was sort of an adopted child, yet her mother-in-law treated her like she was part of the blood part of the family. And Ruth three, her mother's looking after her. She had uh, she had gone. Her mother uh, told her to go to the threshing floor of Boaz, and so she snuck in there in the, the middle of the night, and he was sleeping on the threshing floor. He probably fell asleep threshing the wheat. And so he, uh, mother said, go and pick, uh, pick up the covers on his feet and lay down at his feet. And of course she did that. Well, he woke up in the middle of the night, you know, how you, know, you do, you turn over and there was this woman at his feet. Well, you know, that could be bad reputation wise. So uh, she kind of talked and he realized that, you know, he loved this woman and he wanted to marry her. So he said, look, go back to sleep down there. At, at, at my feet and in the morning before everybody stirs around we'll get up and we'll get you out of here so no one knows you came here so he fixes her up with a bunch of wheat and her barley or whatever it was and and uh, she she makes her way back to Naomi her mother-in-law and the Bible says in uh, Ruth 3 16 and when she came to her mother-in-law 
She said, Who art thou, my daughter? And she told her all that the man had done unto her. Um, she wanted to know, well, uh, you know, are you Miss Boaz? Uh, are you a gal? Well, who are you, my daughter? I sent you away. Who are you? And that's the way mothers do. They're concerned about your life. They want to know who you're dating. They want to know who you marry. They want to know about your children, their grandchildren. That's the way mothers are. And they do that because they love you and don't want to see you get hurt. This man said this one time, he said, Our father was such an undemonstrative man that the children used to worry that he would never seem to show their mother the proper appreciation for her gaiety and the many ways she made uh, their shabby old house feel like a real home. But one afternoon she stopped at a neighbor's house to help with a sick child and delayed getting back. Uh, the father arrived home from work as usual and walked into the living room which the eight children were filling with lively commotion. The father stood in the doorway frowning as he surveyed the scene. And he said, where is everybody? Because mom was at the sick person's house. Those children never worried about their mother uh, that she wasn't appreciated. So when dad walked in the house, the first thing he wanted to see was mom. That's the right way to think about it. Um, thank God if you've got a good mom and dad. And your dad loves your mom. And your mom loves you. There's no greater gift of childhood than that. Proverbs 31, verse 1. Let's look at one more thing. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. I want to look at the teachings of thy mother. You say, what's the difference between that and the law of thy mother? Well, setting down the law is one thing. Teaching you something is quite another thing. And I told you before that I couldn't read after the first grade and they were going to hold me back. And my mother says, oh, no, you're not. He'll read. He'll take a test at the end of the summer and you'll put him in second grade. And all that summer, my mom made me read to her every day. And I learned how to read. Teachers couldn't teach me. My mom did. You know one of the teachings my mother let me know that, that stuck with me? She said, no matter what, I love you. No matter what, I love you. Boy, what a great blessing. I've talked to prisoners in Florida State Prison on death row that had murdered people. Savage individuals. And I've stood before their cells. And, and many times they would be crying. And I'd talk to them about Jesus. And they'd be crying and say, you sound just like my mama. And they'd go and they'd get a letter they got from their mama that week. Where she'd let them know she was praying for them and, 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 and wanted them to change and come to Jesus. And, I, and I'd always look at them and say, look, no matter what, your mama loves you. And I said, don't, don't you want the same from God? Many of them cried with tears of repentance on the bars of their cell and came to Jesus. At a banquet, the mother of George Washington, our first president, was sitting beside a distinguished French officer. Turning to Washington's mother, the officer asked, How have you managed to rear such a splendid son? She said, I taught him to obey. I taught him to obey. You know why she did that? It's because she loved him. She loved him. You know what else my mother taught me? She, she would always tell me, do your best. Do your best. Children, do your best. There's no excuse for slacking off and being lazy. When you study, do your best. You say, well, I make a, an F in, in math. I, it don't matter. Did you do your best? I'm, uh, I bring my report card to mom and, and I say, Mama, I made a C minus. And, 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 and she said, did you do your best? I said, yeah, Mama. She said, that's, that's okay. 
She was never disappointed if I did my best. No matter what it was, whether it was drawing or painting or, or, or building models or, or, or doing some kind of sports that I wasn't good at because my leg was messed up. I mean, Mama always taught me to do my best. And as long as I did my best, my Mama was happy with it. Even if it was a complete and utter failure. Isn't it good to have a mom like that? I hope you had a mom like that. One day in first grade, she said, you need to know how to read. See, you just told us that. Yeah, but that's one of been the most blessing to me in the world. Miss Linda, do I know how to read? Uh, uh-huh. uh-huh. How many books I had going usually at one time? I couldn't get four or five. She can't. I'm, I've, I've got three books uh, by my bathroom. I'm kind of reading them all at the same time. A sermon book, a book about fairy tales, and some dumb book about cartoon characters. So why are you reading that book? Well, that's what inspired me to start drawing in the first place. And I, I haven't been drawing much lately. I figured, well, maybe I'll get inspired again. <laughs> start drawing, reading about these cartoon characters. But my mother made sure that I knew how to read. And what a blessing that has been. Not only have I read this Bible through about 50 some times. But I have read volume after volume after volume after volume after volume. I just got rid of a lot of books and donated them to Goodwill. Because I had read them three or four times. And, and they were just taking up space. I, need, I needed room for more books. I give them away. I got a stack of about 30 books in my bedroom that I'm reading. That's how I got that wound, trying to get a book out of the bottom of the pile. Don't ask me how I did it. Blessed thing to know how to read. It's a gift from my mother. And many of you have other gifts that your mother encouraged you to do. My mother, my mother saw that I was good at artwork and uh, things like that, so she encouraged me. She bought me pencils to sketch with and sketch pads and paints and, and, and modeling clay and, 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 and a drawing board. A real expensive drawing board. I still have it, don't I? That came from my mom because she saw that I like to do artwork. I'm still doing it in a different way. That's the Betty Benton right there. Well, unfortunately, we live in a society that's showing signs of collapse. And I'm afraid that the family structure is breaking down. The book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 6, says this. It says, For the son dishonoreth the father, and the daughter riseth up against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies are the men of his own house. That's what's going on in a lot of houses. Families breaking up and fighting with one another. The divorce rate's been over 50% for a while now. The casualties are usually the children. My mom stuck with it. My dad was a drunkard. And the whole time he was a drunkard, he, she stuck with it. And when she couldn't take it no more, we turned it over to God. I know I did. And you know what God did? God saved my dad. He took the liquor from that man. He rewarded my mother for sticking with the stuff. I owe a lot to my mother. All the artwork and the stuff she encouraged me. The curiosity I have for things came from my mother. She encouraged me to keep trying even when I wasn't good at something. That's one of the best gifts I ever had from my mother. I'm not good at everything. In fact, some things I'm terrible at. But you know what? I don't give up. That came from my mom. 
at a time we do not see eye to eye. Sometimes my mom and me didn't. You know why? Because she raised an independent man with his own mind. I think at the end of her life she was proud of me and glad at the way her boy had turned out. And I'm so grateful for that. I want to ask you a question. Is your mom happy with the way you turned out? I hope she is. Because every mom hopes their kid grows up to be the best person in the world. Amen. I don't care if they're a heathen. They still, they still want that. 2 Timothy 1.5 Paul talks about Timothy. He says, When I call to remembrance of the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded and in thee also. He's saying here, look, Timothy, you're the person that you are today in the faith because your mom and your grandmom had a good influence on you and taught you the right way. Today we ought to be thankful for mom. And, and what's more, you ought to tell her how thankful you are. A man stopped at a flower shop in order to buy some flowers to be wired to his mother who lived 200 miles away. As he got out of his car, he noticed a girl sitting on the curb sobbing. He asked her what was wrong and she replied, I wanted to buy a rose, uh, red rose from my mother, but I only had 75 cents and the rose cost $2. The man smiled and said, come on, on in with me. I'll buy a rose for your mother. She placed, he, uh, he placed his FTD order of flowers to his mother and bought a rose for the little girl. And as they were leaving, he offered a girl a ride back to her house. She responded, yes, please, if I could, take me to my mother. And she directed him to a cemetery where she placed a rose on a freshly dug grave that had been covered up. The man returned to the flower shop. He canceled the wire order and pick up, picked up the flowers at the flower shop himself. And they drove 200 miles to get the flowers to yes. um, Amen. Oh, what did I could drive? See my mom? I can't. But if you can, please, let your mom know how much you appreciate her. And if you don't appreciate her, you should. Heavenly Father, help us now. Thank you for our mom. I had a good mom. We didn't always see eye to eye. Sometimes we had a little kerfuffle here and there. But Lord, at the end of the day, I love my mom. And I thank God for her. And Lord, I thank you for all the moms in this building. Help them to be good moms that love Jesus. And help their children turn out the way they want them to. Fine young men and women that God can go out in the world and make their way and not be afraid. Thank you, Lord, for giving us our parents. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Vic, why don't you come help me, sir? All right. Normally, in years past, we have given away... Uh, said little red roses. This year we decided to do something a little different. Flowers are wonderful, but they don't last forever. <laughs> Not that these are going to last forever, but you'll have them a while. These are nice little, call these handkerchiefs, mm -hmm. yeah. and they got little uh, birdies on them. This one has a little hummingbird. And this one has a little uh, sparrow of some kind. Has a little cardinal on it, so uh, you can take those and put those in your purse or set them up on your dresser and put little things on, you know, whatever you want to do. And, and this is a little present from the church, and, and uh, kind of to say you were glad your mom, happy Mother's Day, and we appreciate you. All right, okay.